I can have a two, two hour cycle, not really worry about it too much. I can go do other things around the shop. Like I run the gearing department, help them out. I can do the surface grinder, go do that. Every once in a while, I'll come back and check and then everything's good. EDM, we are here to talk EDM today. And sometimes it's so difficult to get your attention when we talk EDM because there's not chips flying around, because there's not smoke coming out, because there's not a fire blazing. I don't know, but the technology is incredible because of what it's able to create for a company. Now, here at Giuliante Machine Tool, I'm with my buddy Chris, and this is their second EDM machine, but they went into it much like a lot of you folks out there going, I don't know where it fits. Am I gonna be able to keep work on it? Is it gonna work for me? And Chris, this is kind of what Giuliante went through as well, right? This is what you yep. guys went through, that questioning moment of where, where does this work for me? So how did it work for you guys? Yeah, so in the beginning, uh, we just were sending out a lot of work for the EDM. Didn't see a niche to it. Uh, got our first machine, started to use it just a little bit, got some more work for it. Found that we had a lot of work that we needed to be done. Didn't really want to send out as much, so we got our second machine. And the cool thing with the second machine is it came with a probe. So we're able to do a lot more than we can with our first machine too, which was awesome. And what I'm thinking is when I hear you say we're outsourcing a lot of that work, there's a lot of companies out there who are trying to do more and more in-house. It's very important. But on top of that, I can only imagine how quickly it paid for itself because of probably oh, yeah. what you were being charged to outsource that work. Oh, big time. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. We can make our own fixtures here, kind of do everything. We don't have to worry about someone else messing up parts. That's all our control, you know, so it's good. It's nice to have everything here in-house. I know here at Giuliante, I look around, I see gears everywhere here. You're making a ton of gears, right? Yeah. So with you being here and you're bouncing around these other machines, what have you really enjoyed or explored about the EDM side of things? I just think it's so different. I mean, a lot of these machines, like you said earlier, throw chips, they do some crazy things. The EDM is very, very particular. You know, it's nice to have a clean, good finish out of a machine. Um, it's very different from having everything in a tank of water. Uh, what that wire can do, where it can move. Uh, your limitations are pretty big, so it's nice to figure out, work around that, and kind of get a different cut into what you would with something else. I like that you said that, and we also bring up oftentimes, and, and maybe we talk about it too much, but it, it needs to continue to have an emphasis on it, is the fact that all companies are trying to find good people to work with them, right? Much like yourself, yeah. you know, being a good worker, with something like this, you can kind of, we call it set it and forget it. You can set it up, let it run, do its job, and go do some other things around the shop, including film with me, apparently, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. I can have a two-hour two cycle, not really worry about it too much. I can go do other things around the shop. Like, I run the gearing department, help them out. I can do the surface grinder, go do that. Every once in a while, I'll come back and check, and then everything's good. You know, it's nice. These, these machines don't move much throughout the day. <laughs> That's so true. Just kind of let them go and let them fly. And I look around, I see some Fanuc Robo drills, I see some turning centers over here with Nakamura. Where do you think, on the parts that you run, this EDM really allows you to do more? Obviously you're outsourcing, but for an audience member watching right now going, okay, well, we all are outsourcing something. What did you actually bring in house? What kind of parts, components? Was it high precision parts? Was it, where did it actually pull parts back into the house? Definitely high precision parts. Uh, those tight tolerances are tough to hold elsewhere. Um, like some parts we have are to the two tenths um, where you really can't have too much movement throughout the day. So it's nice to have these where tight tolerance, your finishes, you can do one to maybe more than five cuts on your piece. So depending on what kind of cut you do, it leaves a different finish every time. So it's cool to have that different variety of the cleanliness um, of that finish. And you know, we're able to do a bunch of gear stuff too where they can't really fit that in their, in their gear machines. So it's nice to have that little flexibility there too. Well, Chris, as I'm looking at this machine, and I understand Fanuc, and we talked about you know all of the great things this machine can offer, and in-source, bringing, bringing parts back in here. We have to talk about the software as well. So what's unique about this software, and how has it helped you do more? Yeah, Fanuc with the KMI software definitely helps out a lot on uh, the precision of the cuts for all the EDM stuff. They have a 2D area for it, um, and then you can look at it in a 3D perspective. But the 2D really allows you to convey yourself to what the machine is going to be looking at. So it's really cool to be different from those just 3D softwares that you have now. Um, looking back and taking a step back and learning that 2D and understanding how it's going to cut, where it's going to be, uh, really helps out uh, in being different and, uh, yeah. 
So as we bring this whole conversation full circle, and by the way, nice job so far. You are Thank natural you. on camera. For those of you watching, Thanks. I only met Chris five minutes ago. And he's like, heck <laughs> yeah, I want to be on camera. Amazing that he wants to do that. So to bring this whole thing full circle again, you had one machine, you now invested in a second machine. Are these machines running to capacity? Are they at full load pretty much all the time? Yeah, definitely. I would say probably once a year we stop them just for real full maintenance. Um, that's around the new year. Other than that, they got green lights going the whole time. So they're running full capacity, just always programming for them, you know, making up time. So it's good. Making yeah. money. Making so that's money. really what we, I hope this has been helpful. I know it's not the most exciting topic, but it is an incredible machine that Chris and I are here to share with you that running full capacity, investing in one, investing in a second, able to take parts off with precision that can ship out of the door. I mean, the details of the machine allow people to do so much more, and we are trying to do more in-house. So, Chris, thank you for conveying that message. Thank you for helping yep. me understand. Thank you for helping them understand. And, Chris, like you said, green light all the time. This thing is making money. These Fanics last forever, it seems like. Big time. Yeah, they're great. We love them. And that's how we end it. They are great. This is my buddy Chris. This is MTD CNC. This is Juliante Machine Tool Incorporated. We appreciate you all watching.